Hi, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good good weekend. Um, it's spring again, maybe. We'll see. A um, couple reminders. Uh, user sign-up is due today. Uh, I know just a couple people on Slack were having some questions, having some troubles with that one. Um, so definitely be sure to talk to your TAs this evening or talk to me. I'd be happy to come by and help you out, take a look at your user, user sign-up if you're having some trouble uh, getting that one across the finish line. Uh, if you've already gotten that one finished up, well, don't slow down because we got build a blog uh, coming up right after it. Um, the good news is that uh, there's only a few weeks left of Unit 3, or maybe that's bad news, I don't know how you feel about it, but um, two? This week and next week? Did I count wrong? I thought it was three weeks, but... You said Unit 3. Unit 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, my bad. That's right. We're almost done with Unit 2. Uh, so, three weeks left, I believe. Um, and I want to say, so build a blog and then, is that one? I feel like there's another one after build a blog. Blogs, yeah, that's right. That'll be, so two more assignments, three weeks left, and then we get another break. We're going to get another week, week off in between unit two and unit three, so that's looking pretty darn good right about now, I'd say. Um, so hang in there. I know it's getting uh, a little trickier. This always happens. I've seen it time and time again, but hang in there. We want to help you out. We want to make sure that you uh, get through this. So just uh, make sure you're talking to us, right? Make sure you're letting us know how you're doing. Make sure you're, you're asking for help if you need help. Um, we're not mind readers, but we do really, 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 really want to help you. If you feel like you're behind, if you feel like you're not getting it, um, don't panic. Just ask for some help. That's what we're here for. We want to help you out. So let us know how, how we can do that. Um, any questions for me right now before we hop into today's material? Okay, uh, so the prep work for today was, I'd say, a bit more manageable than some of the prep work we asked you to do last week, although um, there were uh, several opportunities for things to go wrong, I, th I think, in the prep work today as well, for things to not work quite the way you would expect them to. So. Hopefully we'll get some of those things cleared up in today's walkthrough. Um, today is actually going to be mostly walkthrough. It's a pretty sizable walkthrough, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. I am going to do a little tiny uh, review session before we hop in to write some code. Um, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way first, and then we can have a chat about this uh, walkthrough today. Uh, first up, what's, uh, what's an ORM? What's this? I mean, you can tell me what it stands for. Or you can tell me what it is. I don't. I don't care either way. What is it? Object relational mapping. So what the heck does that mean, right? That's that is what it stands for. That is correct. What is it doing for us? Yeah. Sure. That's exactly correct. Yeah, the object is referring to the Python code. Yeah, give yourself a pen on the back for that one. That was good. Object re refers to the Python code in this case, uh, literally a Python object, right? Um, the relational piece deals with the database. The SQL database that we're working with and most SQL databases are um, called relational databases. So that's why the relational is in there. And then the mapping, is, um, as it sounds, creating a link between the two. So I have a Python object, and I have tables in my database, and I want to take certain things from my Python objects, and I want to put them in certain places in my database, right? And the ORM actually takes all of that work. It does a lot of that work for us. We still have to do a little bit of stuff. There's still a little bit of work that we have to do. But what ORMs do, um, and they're actually somewhat controversial for, for this, this next part that I'm about to say, is it makes it so that you don't necessarily have to write a whole lot of SQL if you don't want to. Um, you can let the ORM, the ORM is basically writing the SQL for you. It's basically taking your Python objects, figuring out the SQL queries that would need to be written to either put them in the database or get them out of the database. So if I put a if I want to put something in the database, I give you I give the ORM a Python object. It looks at the Python fields in the object, and 
we've got them labeled with how we want them to be represented, and then it turns that into a SQL query that inserts that object into the database. And the opposite's also true. I go to the ORM, I say, give me all the such and such from the database. It pulls all the rows out of the database and creates Python objects for all of them so that I can use them in my Python code. And I don't have to write a single line of SQL in that whole process. Um, I mentioned it's somewhat controversial, right? Because uh, you'll notice that we actually did want you to learn how to write the SQL, and I actually think that's important to understand um, how SQL works and what is actually happening when you pass that object to an ORM, even though we may not necessarily have to write the SQL. Uh, primarily because the more you understand the system, and hopefully the more you'll understand how to use that framework and that system, and also sometimes things are going to go wrong, and you're going to have to go in there and fix the database someday and you're gonna to have to know how to write the SQL to, to do that, right? That's another reason why it's good. So, uh, ORMs are great. I'm not trying to talk bad about them. I actually love ORMs. I'm glad we're using them. I'm glad we're introducing you to them, but uh, don't let them make you lazy, I guess is the point I'm trying to make here. Still good to have those uh, SQL basics in your pocket. Still good to know how to work with a SQL database. The ORM is not gonna uh, hopefully replace all that interaction for you. All right, cool. Uh, what's a persistent class? Or how do I make one? How do I make a persistent class? So persistence means that it's there for good, right? Persistence in our case means that it's, it's stored in the database. How do, I, how do I create one of those in my code? What do I have to do? db.model, yeah, so yeah, we're using an ORM called SQL Alchemy, that's the name of the ORM. There's actually lots of ORMs out there, that's just the one that we're happening to use. And so if we want to create a class that's going to be stored in our database, we um, extend, that was the right terminology, the DB model class. What's uh, another term for extending the DB model class? We're using what? Inheritance, yeah, we're using inheritance. That's a topic that we haven't talked about in a little while. It's been a minute, but um, I promised it was going to come back, and sure enough, um, we have um, inheritance involved with setting up our models. And so then once I have created that class, how do I set up properties for our persistent classes? What are some things that you would expect to see when I'm setting up these properties? What kinds of information am I going to provide? So that is a kind of property that, I, or that's a kind of field that I could provide, right? The data types. So we talked about this last week, right? The different types of data that SQL provides and how they're kind of like the data types that Python has, but it's not a, it's it's not an exact match, right? So we have to provide some context to that information. Um, that's that's really the primary thing, right? That's the biggest thing that we have to provide for. For the fields of our class, we have to indicate what SQL data type we expect to be associated with each of those fields so that the ORM knows how to create properly create the table that's going to eventually contain um, those objects. Okay? And so then I've got a model, I've got a class, right? I've set up the fields of the class and I've told it the data types and other various properties for that class. And now I want to take one of those things and put it in the database. How do I do that? What are the steps in the code that I need to do that? Yeah, through Python, yeah. I'm sorry? Okay. So we have to set everything up first, right? to create the database and do all that. We're actually gonna do that today in class. So let's assume I've already got the database set up. It's all ready to go and now I've got a Python object and I wanna put it inside of the table. What does that look like? How do I actually stick something in the database? Call the add method on the, one of the database objects. Yeah, exactly. And then retrieval, what does that look like? How do I get stuff out of the database and, and into my Python code? I'm sorry? Query, yeah, there's a query method, right? And again, I want to reiterate that when I do that, when I say add.add add, or when I say .query, 
that method call is actually telling the ORM to write a SQL query, send that SQL query off to the database, wherever it happens to be, and then get those results back um, to the Python program if necessary. So anytime I use one of those things, I am actually, there's actually a SQL query involved with that process. Uh, we don't see it, we don't have to write that SQL query, it's all being handled for us, but that is what is happening behind the scenes. Um, these were the main concepts, and so all of the rest of the prep work today, and actually today's walkthrough as well, uh, is based around putting these concepts to use. And so, uh, before I switch over to the walkthrough, are there any questions about just these general high-level concepts before we write some code today? Um, so, let me preface today's walkthrough by saying that it's, it's a bit long. It's a bit longer than the typical walkthrough. Um, it's actually not designed for you to follow along with me today. It's more designed for you to kind of sit back and treat it like a movie. Um, so uh, I'm not going to stop you if you want to try to follow along. That is, you know, you're all adults. So you can make that decision. But this walkthrough is designed for you to kind of sit back and relax. And uh, I'm going to ask you questions and ask you to help me write some code. But uh, don't feel like you need to try and follow along on your computer today. It's um, we got a lot of work to do, actually, as a matter of fact. And then once we're done, and once you're ready to start today's studio, um, I'll talk to you about how you can access all the work that we did today. Um, so let's switch over to the walkthrough real quick and take a look at uh, what's going on. Um, you, we didn't touch FlickList last week, right? We spent all of our time working with databases. And so FlickList took a break for a week. But actually, some more stuff has been added to it. Uh, while we were busy doing SQL stuff, um, there was some more stuff added to FlickList. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just kind of take a look at what's been added, and then we'll work through today's game plan on how we're going to uh, incorporate a database into our application uh, today. Um, all right, so uh, first things first, I've actually already loaded the, um, the repository. I'm on the walkthrough six branch. I've actually already loaded my environment, so I'm all set up on that front. Uh, I actually just want to go ahead and run it first. Oops. And show you some of the differences. You might have already taken a look at this, or maybe not, I don't know. Um, so here is FlickList. It looks a little bit different than the last time we saw it, right? Uh, I've got these buttons here now that's, that, in, that I can click. And if I click on a button, it says, Star Wars has been crossed off your watch list, indicating that I have watched the movie. We saw this last time. So I've got a button here, but you know the button actually doesn't do anything besides display that message. In other words, it doesn't actually make a permanent change to anything. It's not persistent. That's one of the things that we're going to try to fix today. Um, and you know I can still add movies down here, come down here and add the matrix if I want to and click the button. This still works like you would expect. It tells us that it's been added to the watch list, but actually it wasn't. It's not persistent. That's another thing that we're going to try to fix today. Um, something else, actually this is maybe the biggest piece that was added since the last time you, we took a look at this in class. There's a link down here for ratings. So if I come down here and take a look, I can actually see that it lists all of the movies on my watch list, right? And now there's a drop down, and I can select a rating and click rate it. But again, this is not permanent. This is not a permanent rating. It does not remember my rating. It does, doesn't do anything. And actually, you'll notice that it's not even the same movies that are on my watch list. It looks like two different lists of movies. Um, so um, so we, we have some work to do. I want to make sure we're, we're not going to fix all of those in today's walkthrough. What we're going to fix in today's walkthrough are adding movies to the list and removing movies from the list. And then in the studio today, I believe you're going to do the ratings. You're going to make the ratings persistent. Um, OK? So first things first, if I want to make things persistent in my app, right? I want to uh, make it so that when I add a movie, it actually remembers the movie that I told it. What are some things that I, you would expect that I'm going to have to do to make that happen? Where am I going to start? I'm sorry? 
Configuring my database, exactly right. Configuring my database. So uh, I've already got MAMP started, but I can go ahead and pull up MAMP here um, and show you that uh, I have a database already set up for Flicklist and a user already set up for Flicklist. Um, this is something that you're gonna do as part of the studio today. So there's my user and here is the Flicklist database. It's got no tables, none. So that's something that we're gonna have to do. In fact, that's probably the first thing that I wanna do is figure out how to get some tables into this database. I wanna get some tables into this database. So if that's my goal, to get some tables into this database so we can start feeding some data into it, uh, what am I gonna need to do to make that a reality? There's a lot of stuff, actually. It's a, it's a long answer. So where do we where do we begin? What's missing? Anybody? I'm sorry. SQL Alchemy. There we go. We need to bring SQL Alchemy into the picture, and so that's going to be an import. So first thing I need to do is I need to import my ORM. I can't do anything without the ORM involved. So I'm going to import. SQL Alchemy, there we go, all right. And now I've actually got some work to do to set it up and configure it, right? What are some things that SQL Alchemy needs to know in order to do its job? Connection, connection string. So we're gonna set up a few lines here. The connection string can, uh, includes things like what? The username and password the address, the port number, where the database all lives, right? And so you hopefully did this in the uh, prep work for today. We'll go ahead and set up the connection string for uh, this particular database. The first part says MySQL plus pi MySQL just indicates that we're using Python in conjunction with the MySQL database. And then I give it my username and password to the database. I created this ahead of time. I created the username before class, so I'll go ahead and type it in now. Uh, the user is called Flicklist, and the password is my new pass. Now, if this makes you uneasy, it should. Typing your password into the file like this is a problem, a problem that we'll see how to fix a little bit later on. But for now, since we're just doing testing um, and we're using a fake password here, right, quote unquote fake password, we're gonna let it slide for now. Um, the address, so now the next thing is the address. The database is on my computer, so the address is gonna be localhost, and then I now have to put the port number in here. Um, if you set up MAMP the way that the instructions ask you to, you can use the port number from the prep work. However, if you're unsure, if you if things got fiddled with, I saw uh, more than one person have issues with port numbers. You can always go into MAMP, maybe, wake up. Just thinking about it. You can always go into MAMP and switch over to the ports here, and what you want is whatever value is in this box. So I know the text is too small probably for you to see, but it says 8889. That's the default value if you followed what it said um, in the instructions. So that's what I'll put here. If that number got changed for whatever reason, that's fine, right? Just put whatever number you see in that box. They have to match. Um, they have to match. And then after that, we have to put a slash. And I'm going to type flick list again. Does anybody know why? What is that referring to? It's the name of the database that I'm trying to connect to, right? It's the name of the database, which should be the same as my username if you followed the instructions from the uh, prep work. OK? Um, we're going to set up one more attribute here. the SQL Alchemy Echo. What does that do? Does anybody know? Displays a SQL query. So whenever I do anything um, in the command line interacting with SQL Alchemy, it'll actually show me the SQL queries that it's running. It's not necessary. 
It'll still work without it, but it's interesting and helpful to see the SQL queries that it's actually running. We'll take a look at those in a little bit um, when we actually do some database stuff. All right, so I've set up some options, and now I need to actually create a database object. That's the next step in this process. Thankfully, it's a pretty straightforward step. SQL Alchemy, I'm, I'm constructing a new database object, and I'm telling it that I wanted to work with this application. And this is all what we would call a boilerplate, right? Anytime I set up an application to work with the database, I'm going to have to write similar code to this and just kind of tweak, tweak it to you know, work with the application that I'm currently on. It's all pretty standard. It's all pretty straightforward. What comes next is the stuff that I think is a little bit more interesting and requires a little bit more thought. We need to create a model. That's our next step. We need to create a model. All right. And so in particular, what are we storing in this database? What do you think our object is for this database? It's a movie. It's a movie. So I want to create a model to represent a movie. I want to create a Python object to represent a movie. And I want those movie objects eventually to be stored in our database. That is the goal for today's walkthrough. So I'm going to create a class. And we just talked a minute ago about how if I want this to be represented as a model, it needs to inherit right from, the, uh, from one of the um, database classes. How do I do inheritance in Python? This is a review question from way back. How do I do inheritance? Pass it as an argument. I put it inside of these parentheses that I'm at right here. Right? So in this case, the class that I'm inheriting from is going to be db.model. Anytime I'm creating a Python class that I expect to be stored in a database using SQL Alchemy, it's going to inherit from db.model. What does that mean when it inherits from db.model? What does that actually mean? Yeah. It certainly assists with that process of taking my movie object and putting it in the database. But what does it actually mean when I, when I say I'm using inheritance here? What does inheritance do for us? Exactly. So db.model is a class. I didn't write that class. The people who made SQL Alchemy wrote that class, right? And they're, they're giving it to us so that we can use it. And so by inheriting, any fields that that class has, any methods that that class has, our movie class will also have. And so then what we need to provide to this class is just anything that's unique to our application, namely what we want, what information we want um, this movie object to contain. So uh, what information do we want this movie object to contain? That's sort of the next step here. What are the fields that you think we're going to need for this? Object. We're going to need an ID, and I'll come back and actually properly set these up a little bit later. What else are we going to need? The name of the movie? Oops, not name error, sorry. Anything else? It's a little tricky, but there is one other one that we need to think about. Whether we've watched it or not. Whether or not we've watched it, because I want to be able to track that, right? If I haven't watched it yet, I want it to show up in some places. And if I have watched it, I want to show it in other places. In other words, I don't want to show you a movie on the ratings page if you haven't watched it yet. So I need to have some way of tracking that information, whether I've watched it or not. So I'll go ahead and set these up. And now we actually have a little bit more work to do for each of these three. This is where we're going to define the database properties, right? for each of these three. So what does that look like? How do I declare these properly? db.column, and then I have to provide some additional information. Yeah, so the data type. I have to provide the data type, right? So for the ID, that's almost always going to be an integer. If, if you want to make your ID something other than an integer, you probably you need to have a very, very good reason, in my opinion, to justify that. What else should I provide to this? I need to tell it it's the primary key, all right? 
and that's the proper way to do that. All right, we need to do the same thing for the other two. So for the name, it's going to be a string. And remember, with database strings, we have to provide additional information, right? I have to provide the, the maximum length. So we'll go ahead and use uh, a large value here, 120. You can make it even larger if you wanted to. Oops. And then for watched, what data type do I expect to see here? It's a Boolean. Yeah, either you've watched it or you haven't. No, I had it right, capital B. Okay. And so there we go. I've set up these fields to be um, to work with the database. There's one other thing I need to do as part of this class before I can move on, which is what? I need a constructor. How do I actually make one of these things? Because whenever I get around to actually adding movies or manipulating movies, I'm going to actually have to create instances of this class. And so I need to define what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to define my constructor. This is all review at this point. Of the properties that we have, which ones do we need to provide to the constructor, do you think? The name, OK. Not the primary key, right? How's the primary key get set? The database does all that stuff for me. Because I marked it as the primary key, I no longer have to worry about that. That just is taken care of. What about watched? Should I include that here or not? Yes? Anybody want to argue the opposite? If I create a movie for the first time, have I watched it or not? No, I would say I probably haven't, right? You still want to do it now, otherwise you have to go back and put it in. The prep showed how you had to wipe everything out in order to put that column. Right, but well, I'm not suggesting that we leave the column off. I'm just, I'm just asking, do I need to provide a, a value for that when I construct a movie object or not? I should set it. Yeah, I need to set it, right? The question is, do I need to pass it as an argument? I actually think we don't because... Um, you know, self.name equals name, that's straightforward, but self.watch, I'm going to argue, and you don't necessarily have to agree with me, just set it to false every time. If I create a brand new movie, I'm going to assume that you have not watched it yet. That could be an incorrect assumption. You could make an argument against that, and, and I would actually probably accept that argument, right? But for the purposes of this walkthrough, we're going to assume um, that if you are creating a new movie that you... Um, have not watched it yet. And we made a lot of progress. We're actually now ready to have uh, SQL Alchemy create a, a table to store these objects in, right? We're now ready to do that already. And so we had to do this in the prep work. Uh, you're going to do this in the studio today as well, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now because we cannot proceed until I do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fire up a, a console here. I have to stop my app from running for just a second. Uh, here's a tip. I know some of you saw the message on Slack about this. Um, Python usually works, but sometimes, and I don't know why. Don't, don't ask me why, because I do not know. Sometimes to get Python to work properly, you have to put a dash I on here. The dash I stands for interactive. Um, if it works without the dash I, great. If it doesn't work, Without the dash i, try putting the dash i on there, and that fixes it for a lot of people. That's a common uh, problem that people run into. For me, it happens that I don't need it for whatever reason. Again, I don't know why. Uh, that's just how it happens to work for me. Um, so I can now, actually, I'm going to have to refer back to the uh, walkthrough instructions because I don't remember uh, this code exactly. I can now do something like this. From main, import db and movie. Now, wait a second. Can I do that? Is that going to work? Well, let's try it and see. From main, import db movie. Oops. Got mad at me. Why? Did I save it? I thought so. I did save it. There is something I forgot. Yeah, there we go. I forgot this. I forgot this down at the bottom here. Right? We've done this before. What is it? If 
uh, name equals main like this. Oh, I don't I I put my underscores in the wrong place. Sorry. Oh, it is in both places. All right, cool. I was half correct then. And then yeah, indent this guy. So what does this do for us again? This isn't the first time we've seen this, but what does this do for us again? Prevents it from trying to run the app when we try to import stuff out of the out of this particular module. That's why it failed for me just now when I tried to import the stuff. It was trying to run my app, which it could not do, because uh, it was not as it was not in my environment. It's not in my uh, um, Flask environment. Uh, but now that I've included that, I'll save it and we'll try again. Uh, from main import db comma movie. All right, that time it worked. You can see it did give me a a warning. I've actually had several people ask me. Um, warning actually has a very specific definition, right? When you see anything labeled as a warning, that means that the computer is not happy about it, but it's not going to stop you, right? It's not going to prevent you from going forward with whatever you're trying to do. An error is something that the computer is not happy about that will stop you. You have to fix errors before you move on. You do not have to fix warnings before you move on. So you can ignore warnings. Now, that being said, ignoring warnings is a bad habit. Um, not something that you should be proud of. Uh, but I will say is it is also sometimes just flat out necessary to do that. To just say, well, okay, I see the warning and I'm just going to keep trucking, which is what we're going to do in this particular case. And now we can go ahead and, um, well, first off, we can take a peek at our database object, right? Make sure that it can see that. So here it is. There's our connection string, correct? With the password blacked out so that you guys can't hack me. And now we can actually tell it to make the... Uh, the table, it's gonna hold our, our movies. So if I run this here, there's the SQL, right? You can see the SQL code that it created for us. Okay. And actually, if I go back to PHP my admin now and refresh, I should be able to see, in fact, there is a table. There's nothing in it, but it is in fact there, right? And so the next thing that I want to do actually is I'm going to put in some, some dummy movies just so that we have some stuff in there that we can use to make sure our app is working properly or not. Um, so I'm just going to copy the ones that I see here. It looks like they want to add Mulan and Rushmore or whatever, you know, whatever movies you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go and say, uh, I already forgot what I looked at two seconds ago, db.session.add and then I'm creating a new movie, right? I'm calling the constructor. Uh, yeah. We'll add that one and we'll add a couple more. I actually like Rushmore. Rushmore is a funny movie. Rushmore. Uh, I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter, but I'm also drawing a blank. Oh. Social network, that's a movie, right? And then what do I have to do to make sure that these change, like if I go back right now, right? You can actually see that if I go back and I take a look, I just told it to add all those movies, but, but nothing's here, why not? I gotta commit them, I gotta commit those. Um, that's actually related to something that we talked about last week, we didn't talk about it very long, but what's commit related to? in the database. It's a database concept we talked about on Thursday, I believe. Rhymes with the uh, transaction. I don't know. Yeah, it's part of a transaction. Committing is part of a transaction, so we're actually telling it to commit the, the current transaction of information between us and the database. Um, so if I go ahead and type that into the, um, what is it, is it, do I need session here? I forget. Yeah, commit. All right, and then you can see at that point, it, there it goes, it inserts. There's the insertions, and it looks like everything went okay. I don't see any errors. And now if I go back and I take a look, I can see that those movies actually made it to the database. That's good, right? 
That's good. So I've got some data. I don't think I need to do anything else here for now. Um, you know, there's an example of querying if we want to verify, right? Uh, that querying works. You can see, oh shoot, movie one, movie two, movie three. That's not very convenient. How would I, how would I fix that? How could I make it actually tell me what the movies are instead of uh, movie one, movie two, movie three? I could. There's an easier way. How do I tell an object what I want it to look like? What do I do inside of a class to specify what I want an object to look like when I... To string. Yeah, I need some kind of a string representation of this object. I didn't include that as part of my, as part of my class, right? I, there's, no, there's no string representation here. We actually saw this. Uh, there's two forms that this takes. Uh, there's str. It's been a while. I understand that it's been a long time since we've seen this, but we have seen this before, right? Where I provide a string representation of the movie. Or there's actually uh, this other one, repr, which also gets the job done. I believe I'm going to do this one just because that's what I know is you're going to see when you actually take a look at it in the, uh, in the uh, studio today, just so there's no surprises when we get there. They're very similar uh, methods, actually. Um, so just real quick, we can code up uh, movie, and then I can say we can use dot format here if we want to. A little exercise, self dot name. I didn't have to use format, but I did. And so that's a useful thing to, uh, for debugging purposes, especially for debugging. That's a very useful thing to include. Uh, in order to see if it worked or not, I'd actually have to import it all over again since I changed the class. And then uh, movie.query, oops, dot all. Ah, shoot, it still didn't work. Did I save? I'm sorry? Oh, I forgot the self parameter, thank you. I'm surprised that it didn't complain about that, honestly, but it didn't. Let's try it again. Still didn't work, huh. Still didn't give me what I wanted. I might have to quit out of the whole thing. Try again. I don't know, I'm being a little uh, nitpicky now. No, I shouldn't have to drop the table. Uh, there we go. I just had to restart Python in order for the changes to take effect. But it's working now. You can see the names. OK. All right, so we've already made a lot of progress. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to start up the app again uh, real quick. And go back to the app real quick here, and I'm going to hit the refresh button, and you'll see that, well, okay, I have put those movies in the database. They're in the table. I, I showed them to you a second ago, but I don't see them here. I don't see them here. So what do I need to do in my code to actually get the movies out of the database and show them on this page instead of whatever I've got here now? I have to modify. Here it is right here, get current watch list, right? I have to modify get current watch list because right now I've got all these hard coded in. They're just hard coded. That's not what I want. I want to pull the values from the database. And so um, what we can do to make this work, I know I'm going to need a query, right? So uh, movie.query. Dot all, but actually I need to be a little careful here. I don't need the whole object here, right? I just need the name, 
I just need the names from the movies. So I can write a little for loop uh, to handle that for me. Um, that's going to look like uh, for movie in. I feel like my syntax here is a little off. This isn't right. I'm trying to do a list comprehension, and I'm, my brain is just not wired properly today to make that happen. Movie I'm sorry? For movie.name. For movie.name. No, no. Oh. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you uh, jogged my memory for. Um, Movie in, yeah. Movie in, movie.query. There we go. Thank you very much. So run the query, get all the movies in the database, right? Run the query, and then pull the name out. All right, and so now I saved it. Now if I go back, oh, there we go. It's the actual movies from the database. I'm getting the actual movies from the database. This is persistent now. Any changes that are made to my app, well, is that true though? Like if I come back here and I do some other stuff, uh, oh gosh, if I add more movies, right? says Finding Nemo's been added to my watch list, but actually it hasn't, so we still have a little bit more work to do, right? We still have some more work to do. In fact, I'm going to make the argument real quick that what we did here with the watch list is maybe not the best way to go about it, because movie objects contain more than just the name. They contain some other useful information as well that we may want to access in various parts of our, our app. So instead of pulling out the name, maybe we should just use the objects directly. Return movie.query.all will give me a list of movie objects, right? It's going to give me a list of movie objects. And so for a second, I'm going to I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to go back to my app and refresh the page and whoa. Wait a second. That doesn't look quite right. What is that again? That is from the string representation of our object, right? That's not exactly what I want. How would I fix this? This is a tricky question. How would I fix this? Where is the problem? What, can, I, can you even tell me what file I need to look in to fix this? I'll give you a hint. It's not main.py. My template. I need to fix it in my template because if I pull up the template for this page, which I believe is, uh, is it this one? Yeah. My template is written with the idea in mind that this is a string. But the way that I changed it in my code, it is now no longer a string, right? It is an object. It is a movie object. So when I see the word movie here, or when I see for movie and watch list, this is no longer just the name of a movie. This is an entire movie object. It's an entire movie object. Now, the name of the movie is inside of that object, and I can actually access it. How do I fix this? Dot name. I'm just going to switch it to say dot name here instead. And actually, over here, I might need to consider, uh, well, that's for, yeah, that's for crossed off movie. We'll get to that in a second, actually. We're going to we're gonna pay attention to crossing off movies in just a moment. For now, I'm just going to stick with movie.name. And I'm going to go back and refresh my page. And we're back to where we were a second ago, right? We, we updated our templates to take into the, to account the fact that we now are using movie objects instead of using just the names of movies, just the strings of movies. But I think now some of our code becomes a little bit more misleading 
Um, so for example, if I go back to the Python and I take a look at adding a movie. So let's see if we can get it to permanently add movies to our list now. If I look at this, when I say new movie, I need to be a little bit careful. This isn't, this isn't a new movie object that I'm getting from the form, right? It's just getting the name from the form, and then it is now my responsibility to take that name and do what with it? Put it in the database. But before I put it in the database, what do I have to do first? I have to make an object. I have to make an object. So I think it's worthwhile to actually update and indicate that this is not a movie object. This is just the name of the movie, right? This is just the name of the movie. And I need to, if I, I'm still going to do all the validation, right? So I, I'm just going to update my variable to indicate the fact that I'm talking about the name here, right? I'm still going to do all of my validation on the name of the movie, but if I pass all the validation and I get down here and everything looks okay, I no longer need to worry about escaping it. That's not an issue for us, so I'm going to take that out. When I get to this point, I know that the movie is okay. I know that the movie they've suggested to add is all right. I'm ready to add it to the database, so I'm going to create an object, right? Now I can say new movie equals pass in the name. There I've made a movie object, correct? How do I add it to the database? db.session.add new movie. Okay. Am I done? Got to commit. db.commit. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Dot session dot commit and then for render template well let's just see what happens let's just see what happens so if this works correctly I should now be able to type a movie into this box and have it be permanent let's see I'm gonna add it all right so there's a problem right we know how to fix that problem we've seen that problem before but more importantly let's go back and see oh hey it's actually on my list now. It got added to the database, and then when I reloaded my list, it went back to the database, saw the, grabbed all the movies that were in there, including the one that I just added, and now it's actually on my list. Let's fix that add template real quick. We know how to do that, right? I just need to go into the, um, the add template here. Uh, what is it? Where is it? Oh, add confirmation and switch this just like we did before to say movie.name since I'm dealing with an object now, right? Okay. So we've actually made it so that adding movies works, but if I say that I watched it, oh, it's, it's very broken. It's very broken, right? not working at all. Does anybody know what's happening? Why, why it's not reacting to my click? There's a, a big hint on the screen. Yeah, I know it's hard to see because it's up here at the top. This looks weird. It says, it's got the brackets around it, right? And then it says, is not on your watch list, so you can't cross it off. Oh well, wait, yeah it is. It is on my watch list, but I'm looking it up as an object, and that's not the way we look stuff up anymore. I've got a database now. This is a querying problem. This is a querying problem. What's the proper way to look stuff up? If I really want to look something up, what's the best way for me to do it? I want to look up a specific movie. What's the best way for me to look up a specific movie? By ID. Name's not good enough because we know Hollywood likes to remake the crap out of everything these days, right? By ID is the best way to do it. So think about what that means. I now need to switch crossing off movies to not pass the name of the movie along, but the ID of the movie along, and then look up that ID in the database when I'm going to cross things off, correct? So let's do that next. Um, 
if I go back to edit here, the cross off section is, uh, actually I just passed it, sorry. The button is right here and you can see that the value for the button is currently set to movie, which is what? What is this? It's an object, yeah, it's an object. It's an object. So I don't want the object, I just said that it's easier for me to look up movies by ID. So I'm gonna pass the ID here, which means that when I click this button, it's going to send the ID over to the form handler, right? It's gonna send the ID over to that form handler. So what I need to do now is I need to go back to the form handler for crossing off a movie, uh, which is here, right? It's right here. And so when I say request.form, give me the crossed off movie, the value that I'm getting now is the ID, correct? It's the ID. And so instead of doing this, so does this statement make sense anymore? Let me get this out of the way. Does this statement make sense anymore if crossed off movie not in get current watch list? Does that make sense? No, I'm asking if an ID is in a list of movie objects. Those things are not comparable. What I need to do instead is actually look up the ID in the database to see if they can find it or not. So how do I do that? How do I look up a movie by its ID? I'm sorry? A query. So movie dot query dot filter by? What do we think? Anybody know? This is a little tricky. I actually uh, need to refer to my own notes here and make sure that I know how to do this. Because <laughs> I'm not sure that I remember off the top of my head. Um, where am I at here? There it is. There's another way that we can access movies called get. So it's a little bit different. So the option we've been using is all, which is just give me everything, right? We don't want everything. We don't want it all. We want just one of them. And so get is used when I'm looking things up by the primary key specifically, which is what I'm doing in this case. I'm looking up something by the primary key. Crossed off movie. All right. So one of two things is going to happen here. It's going to find the movie, and I can go ahead and cross it off the list. Or it's not going to find the movie, in which case I've got a problem, right? That would be an error, I would think. They somehow managed to cross off a movie that's not on their watch list, and I would want to display that information to them. So the question is, what do I get back from this? If it succeeds, what do I expect to get back from this? Nope, not the title, not true. The object, remember ORM is an object relational mapping, so it's gonna give me an object back. It's gonna give me a movie object. Specifically, it's gonna give me a movie object that represents whatever movie I was looking up, right? So I can save that to a variable. I can stash that in a variable. And then I, so what if it doesn't find that movie? What if I look this up and it doesn't find it? What do you think it's going to give me back? None. Null. However you want to think about it. So then this check actually becomes a little bit easier, right? Instead of saying this, I can just say, not if movie, if movie means that it does exist. If movie means that the movie is there, I found it. I'm actually looking for the opposite, so if not movie. If not movie. I'll make an error and I'll send it back. So 
So let's assume that it did find the movie. How do I indicate that, that it's been crossed off the watch list? What do I need to do to, to indicate that they've crossed it off their list? So I do need to render the template. That's true. I think I need to do something else first. I have to do something with the Boolean value, right? They're, they are crossing it off the list. I assume that means that they've watched it. So I need to change that watched value to be true, which this is an object, right? So I can actually just access that variable directly, movie.watched equals true. Am I good? No. What else do I need to do? I got to commit it back. I made a change to the object. It's not going to remember that if I don't put it back in the database and commit it back. And we've seen how to do that. Uh, movie.session.addMovie and then, um, sorry, thank you, and then uh, db.commit.session. Man, I really just don't want to type that word, do I? I really don't want to type that word. So let's recap real quick, right? I looked the movie up in the database. I checked to make sure that it existed or not. Right? Actually, this error message is a little problematic. Do you see why? Because it's doing a format here where it substitutes in. So I actually, if they try to cross off a movie that's not on their list, I don't know what movie they're trying to cross off, right? So I need to make it more generic. I can't say this. I can't say this movie is not on your watch list. I just have to say whatever movie you tried to do is not on your watch list. It's a it's a more general kind of error. Is that error, is that error even necessary? Yeah. Or do you want to buy right? Right. That's what I was Well, remember that if somebody wants to, they can open up developer tools, go into the HTML, and make those values say whatever the heck they want them to say. So yes, it is necessary. Uh, because we want our application, we don't want our application to get fooled if somebody decides to do that. We still want it to behave properly. Um, so a more accurate message here would be to say something like, uh, stop messing with, <laughs> <laughs> um, attempted to uh, cross off a movie that is not in the database, right? Or something like that. It's more generic, it's more general than what we were able to say before. But that's the best we can do. And it is accurate, right? That is what happened if, if they get an error here. And so let's, let's give it a try, actually. Let's see if we can, let's see if this does what we expect it to do. Now if it works, what do we expect to happen? We expect that I click the button, and then the next time I come to the page, that movie is no longer here, correct? That's what I expect to happen. That's what I want to happen. So, okay, well, there's a problem. Four. Whoops. We know how to fix that, right? We know how to fix that. So let's well, let's see if it, it if it at least removed it from the list, and then we can go figure that out. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. So we got two problems. We got two problems. We got the four problem, and then we got the problem that it didn't actually remove it from the list. Let's tackle the four problem first. That's in our template, probably. So what are we passing to the template? We're passing crossed off movie. Is that what we want to pass to the template? What is crossed off movie? It's actually an ID. In fact, it's a little misleading. In fact, I probably want to, here's a fancy, here's a fancy tip. If you have a variable and you don't like the name of that variable anymore, uh, you can let um, Visual Studio Code rename it for you. Um, so this is the ID, and so when I do that, oh shoot, refactoring library is not installed. Give me a break, guys. I was trying to do something all fancy, and then you you ruined it. Are you gonna work now? Uh, so it renamed it here. Did it rename it in the other places too? It did. It renamed every everywhere that it found it. So that's a nice tool, right? 
You probably already noticed that if I highlight a variable, it highlights all the other places. If I rename this variable using Visual Studio Code, it'll rename it in all of the places. So I don't have to go hunt down every single place where I rename, where I use that variable and rename it myself. That's a neat little tip to save you some time uh, if you're refactoring your code, right? Um, so this is a more accurate name, but that's actually not what we want to pass in here. I don't want to pass in the ID. What do I want to pass in? The name or the object, right? And then just like we did for the other ones, we can go to uh, the template and indicate that it is, it's an object now, right? So we need to grab the name out of it just like we did in the other spots. So let's see if we've fixed that problem at least. Let's see if we've done that one. Click the button, okay, cool, that's better. It's now the proper name, so I fixed that, but I still haven't fixed the issue that it's on my list. It's still on my list. I don't want it on my list anymore. So where's that in the code? What's the problem there? I did query.all when I loaded this list, which is not good enough. I need to query and also take into account whether they've watched the movie or not, correct? So instead of query.all up here, what do I want to say? I need a filter by. Filter by, right, and then what do I say here? What am I looking for? Watched equals false. Yeah, the movies that I have not watched yet, right? And actually, I should be able to come over here and, unless I broke something. Oh, I broke something, shoot. Was I supposed to put that in quotes? Filter underscore. Thank you. Did the error message tell us that? Has, oh yeah, has no attribute filtered by? Yeah, it told me I screwed up the name. Yep, let's try again. Okay. Base query has no length. Hmm. Let's see what it's mad about here. Return render template edit.html. So there's something wrong with edit.html, apparently. Get current watch list. Something is still messed up with this one. Let me double check real quick and see, because I'm not even sure I know where I went wrong this time. Dot all, yeah, I need dot all after. That's where I messed up. Thank you. This does the filtering, but doesn't actually give me back the list of movies until I say dot all. That's what I skipped. Thank you. Let's try one more time. There we go. Hey, it worked. And we can actually keep testing it if we want to. I can click this button. It says Rushmore has been removed, and it has. It's gone. It's gone. But it's not really gone, right? If I go back to my database, I can see that the movie is not gone. The movie is actually just marked as being watched in the database, right? The info is still there, right? And so then, um, just to kind of uh, wrap up, so what we've actually covered a lot of ground today. I put a database behind this to actually let us to add and remove movies for real. If I stop my application and fire it up again later, it's going to remember the movies, right? It'll be the exact same list of movies as when I when I use it the the last time. The piece that still doesn't work is the ratings and so you are going to be in charge of actually fixing this page we wanted to um, do a few things you'll notice that these movies are still hard coded in it has nothing to so if i click a movie is being watched i want it to show up on this page and that's not happening so you're going to have to fix that we also have this idea of ratings that aren't being accounted for in our database so we want to remember those as well so that if somebody wants to maybe change their rating, right, we have the ability to show them what their old rating was and allow them to submit a new rating. Um, so that's going to be part of your studio today, um, too, as a matter of fact. 
Um, so that's your goal for studio. I think I actually hit the end of the walkthrough. Um, so for you guys, if you're getting ready to start on the studio, um, let me go ahead and uh, commit my stuff here real quick. I'll add everything that I've done and then uh, do a commit. Walkthrough done. And then to get you guys set up for the studio, you would check out the uh, Studio 6 branch. It should have all the changes that we made, and there might have been some things that looked a little bit different than what we did in the walkthrough. There usually are some things that look a little different, but um, are there any questions about what we've done today? We covered a lot of ground. Any questions? Yeah, what's up? Yes. You could. Yeah, the question was, could I have made that adjustment in render template and the answer? So let me make sure I um, am understanding you properly. Like, like here I'm passing in a movie object, right? But could I have just passed in movie.name? The answer is yes. I could have just passed in movie.name. That is correct. Um, whether you want to do this or not depends on a couple of things, right? If I ever expect that I may want to expand this confirmation page, then I might want to access the other values that are in that movie object, right? And use those things as well, in which case the object's more useful. But if, if it's really only ever going to display the name, then you could just pass in the name of the object and, and call it a day. Yes, you certainly could. Absolutely. Um, the important thing at the end of the day is to make sure that you understand that we're now using an object to represent this movie, this core piece of our app. And so you have to know when you're using that object versus when you just need to access some of the fields of that object, which is not always easy. It's, it can be tricky. Um, great question. Any other questions before we wrap up? So studio today, yeah, what's up? You are, yeah. In fact, well, so that's actually, I'm not sure if you will have to drop it or not because, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that you weren't expected to follow along today. So if you did follow along with me today, you're going to have to drop your database and restart it. If you didn't follow along with me today, you can actually update the model first before you create the database so that it has all the, the proper stuff in it. Yeah. Um, but if you need help with that, let me know. I'd be happy to make sure you get set up properly so you can do the studio. Um, but it's going to be more of what we did here, right? Replacing uh, the hard-coded movie values, right? You can see that I actually have, uh, there's still a few places like this list right here that's got movies hard-coded in. We don't want that anymore. We want to use our database in those spots instead. So that's going to be your goal for the studio today. Any other questions before I get, out, get off the stage? All right, thanks for your help today, guys. You were great. Uh, we will go over the studio at 8 o'clock. And also let us know if you need help uh, getting uh, user sign-up finished today as well so that we can get you checked off on that.